Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So we'll continue our discussion with process control and instrumentation. And so far we have discussed uh, the basic introductory concepts uh, about uh, process control and process control loop. We discussed about uh, the various uh, examples related to how process control operates and about the basic control mechanisms that are used normally. So here we'll discuss about uh, the basic things related to the design of a control loop, process control loop for a specific process to achieve a certain objective. Okay. So we know that uh, a process is basically a number of uh, operations, uh, a systematic series of operations or actions happening either simultaneously or one after another that gives us an end product, an end result. So the various examples of process can be the energy generation from fuels, water, wind, power, transmission and distribution, product manufacturing, food processing, etc. So a basic process control loop operates in this way, where we have the process that has an input and the output. That is a simple open loop process. But when feedback path is involved, the various other circuitry also comes into play, such as the sensor which measures the output, suitable sensor or transducer measures the output gives that reading to the controller where it is compared with the set point value which is the value of output which we want which we desire is called as the set point or reference then it calculates the error signal the gap between the actual output and the desired output and depending on that the controller takes suitable control action with the help of the actuator to manipulate the input to adjust the input to the process so that the output is close to the set point value, the desired value. So the basic aim of the process control loop is to bring the output close to the desired value, close to the set point value. It will never be equal. It may never be equal to the set point value, but the job of the process control loop is to minimize the gap between the actual output and the desired output to minimize the gap between expectation and reality so a basic process uh, can be represented with the help of this block diagram where we have the inputs Manipulated variable is the input which is adjusted by the microcontroller or the controller with the help of the actuator to influence the output and the output which is influenced is called as the control variable and by the variable which it is influenced that is the manipulated variable. So the input variable which has a direct impact on the output variable that we want is the manipulated variable and the output variable which we want to control is the control variable. So disturbance are the unnecessary or unwanted inputs that cause disturbances or fluctuations in the uh, control variable and unmeasured outputs are the byproducts of a process. It is not that we get only one product from a suitable process. It may produce other byproducts which are not required, which may be required or not required. So those are unmeasured outputs. So the important things here are the manipulated variable, the controlled variable and the disturbance variables. We have to take into account the disturbance variables also sometime. So the basic steps in uh, designing of a process control system or loop is uh, first the most important determination of the operational requirements what do you want the control system to do 
and not just in a theoretical sense you have to quantify it what do you want which parameter you want to control and what is the value that or the range of values that you want the output the value to be to stay within okay then the operational requirements have to be converted into control objectives that is uh, just said that we have to quantify them and that's where set point or reference value comes into play then is uh, the identification of the controlled variables and their measurement so what variables are the important ones for us you know what parameters are important for us that is the output parameter which we want to control so it is the controlled variables at the output and the variables through which we want to control the output those are the manipulated variables at the input side okay so there should be at least one manipulated variable for each control variable at least sometimes multiple manipulated variables control uh, a single control variable more than one input variables control the output and in some cases in some control mechanisms disturbance variables are also taken into account the unnecessary things uh, that come into play in the process so simple example let us take which we have already discussed but just to make you understand first is the patient monitoring system which we have already discussed in the basic example so we'll take that example again so here the main objective of the control system is to generate an alarm when the vital parameters in this case the electrocardiogram signal and the electroencephalogram signal which indicates activity about heart and brain when they reach an abnormal stage which is defined by the set points normal value when they exceed or drop below a normal values the normal range then the controller will sound the alarm so our objective here is to sound the alarm when the ecg and eeg parameters they cross the normal range now this is just a theoretical thing here in order to con convert it into control objectives what is done that uh, suitable sensors are placed on the body of uh, the patient to detect to measure the ecg signal and eeg signal that is converted into voltage or current form it is given to the controller also the set point values are also given to the controller in terms of voltage or current form so that is quantifying the variables the parameters so when these sensor voltages indicating ecg and eeg exceed the normal range the controller which is programmed in that way will sound the alarm with the help of suitable actuator in this case an electrical actuator will be used and an alarm a buzzer will be used so that is a different thing so that is the objective similarly if we take another example uh, let's say the lighting system automatic lighting system here a photo detector detects or measures the intensity of sunlight depending on that the set point intensity of light is given so whether it is daytime or uh, evening or early morning or night the intensity of the light it will vary and the readings of the photo detector will also change so the microcontroller is programmed with in a certain way that within a certain range of values the microcontroller will turn the light off that is during the early morning or daytime and when the evening or night during the evening and night time a certain range of values will be there when the photo detector readings fall in that range the microcontroller will turn the light on so here our end objective is turning on and off of light the input variable is the reading 
of the photo detector to the microcontroller but the actual input variable is the sunlight sunlight intensity now this is uh, the simple examples let us uh, understand this whole design of a process control system with the help of another basic and simple example which is used in food processing industry we will take an example let us say the making of biscuits or cookies which is done in a factory setup where, which, uh, which use the process control system so we can divide this whole making of biscuits or cookies this whole thing into three different parts first is the preparation of the dough so those who are a little bit familiar with uh, cooking they know that uh, any baking or uh, you know uh, biscuits or cakes or cookies that involves preparation of the dough or the batter that is the first step that will have a separate setup a separate control loop for that then will be the baking setup where uh, it is baked in an uh, oven and then is the packaging of the cookies so these are three different parts we can divide sometimes they are done simultaneously in using a single process control loop but normally they, uh, there are separate sections for each of them so now let us try to understand how the process control loop is used for achieving these three different uh, objectives okay so now we'll discuss uh, the various uh, steps of making the biscuits first dough making then baking and packaging is a different step but mainly we are going to discuss the dough making and package uh, the baking uh, process from the point of view of process control loop so here you can see a, a representation a schematic representation a diagrammatic representation of the whole process where we have the dough container into which the various ingredients that are required for making a biscuit are used first we have is the flour water then we have uh, is oil and sugar and each of these ingredients they are pumped into this dough container with the help of pipelines and the flow rate of each of these ingredients are adjusted using control valves so here the important steps are the identification of the manipulated variable and the controlled variable so here the manipulated variables that we want to control the temperature of water and the flow rate of water so if you have noticed that the biscuits or cookies or cakes of different brands they never taste the same for example if you taste the same type of cookie let's say chocolate biscuits or chocolate cookies from two different brands or three different brands they will taste different there will be a subtle difference between the taste so that is controlled by the various uh, parameters okay such as temperature of the ingredients or the temperature of baking the pressure the volume of the dough so these parameters are changed to bring about subtle variations in taste so here the important variables manipulated variables are the temperature of the water and the flow rate of the water similarly the flow rate of the flour and also the flow rate of oil and sugar so all these are measured with the help of suitable flow rate sensors and temperature sensors and are given to respective microcontrollers with different set points for temperature and flow rate and it will be different for different ingredients for water it will be different for flour it will be different see we have different microcontroller with different set point and also for oil and sugar also it is different 
for oil we are measuring both the temperature and flow rate and for sugar we are just measuring the flow rate now see this is just a way to make you understand how the process control loop works so now all these ingredients go inside the dough container which is a big container where there is a, a circular motion where the preparation of the dough happens so each of these parameters are continuously monitored the flow rates the temperatures they are continuously monitored with the respective sensors and the necessary changes are made to bring their values close to the set point now the parameter which we want to control is the quantity of dough how much volume of dough is required okay certain kgs of dough are required to be prepared at one go in one batch so that is the controlled variable so for that also there is a separate control loop so all of these things are defined using the manipulated variables the controlled variables and in some cases other things such as the disturbance variables also come into play such as pressure the atmospheric pressure or the pressure inside the container which we have not taken into consideration here so this is a basic example of how the process control loop works in a simple example of making biscuits the dough preparation now let us discuss the baking part okay so we discussed the dough preparation part and the process control loop associated with that now we'll discuss the baking part so mostly the baking is done in uh, electric ovens so for that uh, the various uh, parameters that are required most importantly is the temperature of the oven so in some cases the pressure is also measured so here we have taken both of them into consideration the temperature and the pressure at which baking happens so both these parameters the temperature inside the oven and the pressure is measured with the help of suitable temperature sensor and pressure sensor uh, the atmospheric pressure or the or the inside pressure of the oven that is given to the microcontroller where it is compared with the set point values the desired values of temperature and pressure and depending on that temperature adjustment happens electrically with the help of suitable electrical actuators and pressure adjustment happens with the help of control valves which uh, controls the amount of air that is let in inside the oven so this is the uh, process control loop for the baking part so here the operational requirement is the adjustment of the inside temperature and pressure of the oven that is the controlled variable and the this electrical mechanisms of uh, temperature adjustment with the help of normally relays are used or suitable stepper motors or uh, dc motors can also be used to this serve as actuators and this valve serves as mechanical actuator for pressure adjustment and temperature adjustment so this is the whole setup of baking so the purpose of it was to make you understand familiar with the concept of process the concept of manipulated variable controlled variable control objectives and operational requirements so this is the whole thing so we discussed the automatic lighting system the patient monitoring system and the simple uh, uh, preparation of biscuits or cookies from the point of view of process control loop so here we have discussed the various steps in design of a control system process control loop for a process and we discussed it with the help of various uh, examples the automatic lighting system patient monitoring system and the uh, biscuit preparation from the point of view of that so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day 
थैंक यू वेरी मच